December 6, 2016, Tuesday of the second week of Advent. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. I answer, What shall I cry out? All flesh is grass, and all their glory like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower wilts, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. So then, the people is the grass. Though the grass withers and the flower wilts, The word of our God stands forever. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him. His recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is The Lord our God comes with power. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. The Lord our God comes with power. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. The Lord our God comes with power. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then let all the trees of the forest rejoice. The Lord our God comes with power. They shall exult before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The Lord our God comes with power. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, Amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. December 6th, Tuesday of the second week of Advent, the Memorial of St. Nicholas. The first reading comes from Isaiah 40, 1-11. Isaiah 40 begins a part of the book of the prophet Isaiah that most probably was not written by the original prophet Isaiah. Rather, it was written over a hundred years later during the Babylonian exile, which lasted from 587 to 539 BC. It was written by a prophet or prophets who we call Deutero-Isaiah, 2nd Isaiah. And these are words of consolation, and in fact, the first words we hear today are, Console my people, console them. 
The people have suffered exile. They've been punished for their sins. And what is the message of Deutero Isaiah? You have atoned for your sins. God will heal you. In fact, God will prepare a way in the wilderness. Just as God led the people from Egypt, from their slavery, God will now perform a second exodus, which is greater than the first. Every valley will be filled in, every mountain laid low. And this should be proclaimed throughout the land because God is with his people. The people no longer have to think that God is distant, that God is impotent. They wonder whether God is powerful because, in fact, their army had been defeated by Babylon. Doesn't that show that the gods of the Babylonians are more powerful than Yahweh? And the answer is no, because this is the God who created the entire universe, the heavens and the earth. But this is a God who is not simply known for power, he is also known for gentleness. He is like a shepherd who will feed his flock. Now the image of shepherd was a favorite image during the exile. In fact, Psalm 23, which speaks about how the Lord is our shepherd, was probably written during this time. It's a very affectionate image which shows how God will lead us back to our home. God will protect us from every danger. The Gospel is from Matthew 18, 12 to 14. It uses the image of a shepherd again. And Jesus says, if a man has a hundred sheep and one gets lost, won't he leave the ninety-nine and search for the lost one? That's how God searches for the sinner. Now this gives us an important message in our ministry, whatever that ministry might be. Our energy should most of all be spent upon those who are lost, those who have messed up their ways and have to return to the Lord. And if that means that the 99 have to be left while we search after the one, so be it. Now the 99 could have easily say, wait a minute, we're the ones who follow Jesus the whole time. Why is he showing more love and more attention to the one who's broken? And the response is obvious, because that person needs him. And if we truly love Jesus, we would be thrilled that Jesus was reaching out to the broken one, because that's who Jesus is. That's what he calls us to be. And may God bless us.